He says, Inni, indeed I. Amantu bi rabbikum. Amantu, I have believed bi rabbikum in your Lord. Finally, he says it. Allah is your Lord. Fasma'uni. So listen to me. Listen to me, meaning you should also believe. Or listen to me, meaning hear my shahada, my testimony. Be a witness that I have believed. Inni amantu bi rabbikum fasma'uni. In Surah Fusilat, Ayah 33, Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Whose word is better? Whose speech is better? Meaning no one's speech could be better than the one who calls to Allah. Calling to Allah is the best statement that a person could ever utter. And he also does righteous work. And he says, indeed I am of those who surrender to Allah. So over here he says, إِنِّي آمَنْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ فَاسْمَعُونِي what happened? The people forgot about the Mursaloon and they turned their attention towards this believer, this man who's doing da'wah to them. And what did they do? They killed him. It's not mentioned over here, but they killed him. It's implied by the verses. Because قيل, it was said. It was said to that man, Udukhulil Jannah, enter Jannah. How can a person enter Jannah if he hasn't? died, if he hasn't left this world. قِيلَ دْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ It was said, enter Jannah. Why Why was it said to him? Because the people killed him. And what did the man say? After he was killed, قَالَ He said, يَا لَيْتَ Oh, I wish that قَوْمِ My people يَعْلَمُونَ They would know. I wish my people could know. They could know what? بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي if only they could know of bima of that which غفر لي, He forgave me, Rabbi my Lord. If they could only know with what mercy Allah forgave me. وجعلني, and He made me, He placed me من المكرمين of those who are honored. Meaning among those who are honored. Mukramin is a plural of mukram. Mukram is one who has been treated with a lot of karam. He's been treated with a lot of respect and honor. How? He's been received very honorably. He's been gifted very honorably. He has been showered with blessings. So, وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ What do we see over here? The man is so polite in the way that he does da'wah, in the way that he defends the prophets, in the way that he explains his belief. And he does it so briefly, so eloquently, in such a sensitive way so as to not hurt the feelings of the people that he was addressing. He's so wise in the way that he addresses them. Yet, did the people accept? No. Even though he was one of them, still they didn't accept. And instead, they actually killed him. And when they killed him, and Allah rewarded him, what did the man want? Somehow, the people could see the fate, the end of this man, that how Allah forgave him and gave him so much honor. What does it tell us about this man? Did he really want guidance for the people? Yes. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said he was sincere towards his people during his lifetime and also after he died. Meaning while he was alive, he was sincere to the people. Ya qawmi tabi'ul mursali. And the way that he addressed him, he's so sincere. And then even after he died, they killed him. Still, he's sincere. He wants the best for his people. What does this teach us? Dawa can never be with hate. We can never call people to Allah. We can never call people to the truth. We can never call people to, you know, good through hate, through anger, through rage. It's with love and with sincerity, with well-wishing. If you think about it, has it ever happened with you that you were at the mall, some random person came and they just started talking to you and made you feel so good and they made you buy something that you didn't even need? Has it ever happened with you? Or they at least convinced you that you really need it? 
right? And you're willing to spend all that money, even though you don't need it. It's the first time ever you're meeting that person, but they treated you so well that the whole experience it made you love the product, right? Because you were treated so well. Forget about the product. It's the way they treated you that you wanted the product. Correct? This is how a dari is supposed to be. Yes. I said, okay. She said, you have your data on the phone? I said, yes. So I tried him. I said, let me just text message him. But after that, the form will be coming. They ask me for my name. I said, so now I said, no, I don't want it. But I don't want to feel the cashiers uh, feel bad or uh, unhappy. So I said, let me do it just because of her. I mean, 5% is nothing for me, but the way like she's helped, she said, I said, oh, you have to know I'm going to get an email, all this stuff. Yeah. But she said, no, you can do it. But she just like I make, I, I, I put the smile on her face, just like 5%. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, sometimes the way they talk to you, you feel bad even saying no. Isn't it? So you'll say yes, or you'll say, I'll think about it. Why? Because you don't want to hurt their feelings. They treated you so well that it's as if if you were to say no, it would be rude to say no. You have all the right to say no, right? But you don't say no because it sounds so rude. Correct? So look at the nus of this dari. He doesn't have any anger. He doesn't have any hate for the people, even though they killed him. He still wants them to know. What do you see over here? Firstly, the fact that they killed him. Immediately, what happened? It was said, you enter Jannah. Immediately, the man was admitted into paradise. Because basically, this man was a martyr. Right? And a martyr is granted forgiveness of his sins from the first drop of blood that is shed. And the souls of the martyrs are in the form of beautiful birds. Where? In Jannah until the Day of Judgment as we learned about it earlier in the Qur'an. And then we see over here, he says, if only my people could know of the forgiveness that Allah showed me and the honor that He gave me. Earlier in the surah, we learned that the person who follows the guidance, فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ And this entire incident is basically an illustration of that ayah. إِنَّمَا تُنْذِرُ مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرِ Warning can only benefit the one who follows the guidance. Meaning, and following the reminder, first of all means that at least you listen to it. This whole nation, it's as if they ignored the message of the prophets and they directed all their energy on denying the prophets, opposing the prophets. This man, he bothered to listen. At least he paid attention. And when he listened, he followed the dhikr. The warning benefited him. وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنَ بِالْغَيْبِ He feared Allah even though he had never seen Allah. So for such a person, Allah says, فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ Give him the good news of forgiveness and a noble reward. Was that given to this person? Yes. بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي This is مَغْفِرَةٍ And أَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ What's the lesson in the story? Before we continue. Share one thing you learned from the person sitting next to you. All right. So what lesson do we learn? Quickly, quickly. I was thinking about how the positive impact of what you do is you don't necessarily end up seeing it. So the prophets all, like, they kept preaching to the people and preaching to the people. And if this incident never happened, they would have never known that a man had actually believed. So even though you preaching at the end, the results are up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how like the positive impact of your actions, you never know how it affects other people. I mean, if you think about it, this man was where? I mean, Aqsa al-Madina, so far away, right? And three prophets are preaching and one person believes. And then this one person does so much da'wah, right? It kept on drawing my attention to the I messages. They talk about I messages in the communication for marriage counseling at work placement. That when you confront or talk to somebody, instead of saying you are wrong in doing this, or and you say I feel that way, and then people don't become like oppositional right away. Give them time to think that this is your feeling and you're not pointing fingers. And that has been mashallah 
it's so much ingrained in this whole situation that he is not like pose uh, directing his finger towards people but he's telling them how he feels yes that when we attack other people by saying you are like this you did this you are at fault because you are doing this then people become defensive and once they become defensive they're not really taking in what you're saying their whole focus is on defending themselves prove themselves as innocent all right and prove themselves as right but when you present yourself that i'm feeling like this right or i think if i were to do this then such and such would happen when you make yourself the object then the other person doesn't become defensive they can actually think about the situation this is one of the best ways of communication Assalamu alaikum. Yesterday before yesterday the sister she was telling me uh, she know a sister this sister her kid is they drink alcohol and they alcoholic they don't listen to her this and that and she is very religious and she make dua and once she's coming from work and she found this another sister she's a muslim she's drunk and she's in the ground she carry her she give her shower like she give her breakfast in the, in the morning she give her money and she said to her you can go to your home she was so sincere to her but she didn't tell her like what you did is wrong and just she give her nasiha and that's it and then this sister she went to home and she start making dua for her and this is because of that sister she start you know become closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she start making dua for her after two months her kids all they came back to her and now they are practicing alhamdulillah You know, it's very easy to address someone harshly. It's very easy to point out their faults. It's very easy to show anger, to show frustration, but it doesn't get us anywhere. What is effective is love, compassion, mercy, sabr, patience. This is what works. This is what we see in the example of the prophets, and this is what we see in the example of this man also. Assalamu alaykum. this is shows how hard it is to convey to the people because you don't know what kind of people you deal with or they may you may get harm mentally or physically and this example shows that so like hard people to to convey to something and it shows allah gave them so much chances then they could at least to consider to listen and they did not even get that chance and that is very bad yes so many chances were given to them two prophets were sent a third was sent and then a local person came doing the work for them i was having a similar conversation with my mom the way that certain people convey things there was two individuals who had expressed their opinion about something to me and one of them i disagreed with both of them but i was telling my mom that with one of them i disagreed with them and i felt very hurt by what they were saying and the other one i had also disagreed with them but i felt like when they were telling me it came from their heart whereas this one it was just like i know what's right i'm better than you therefore i'm going to tell you and sometimes we think that if people are telling us something that we disagree with like we're upset because of that it's not really it's not about I hate this person because I don't agree with what they're saying but you can dislike a person because of the way that they're presenting something to you and then someone else can present something to you in the same way and you like it and then you might incline towards it or you might still not incline toward it but you'll at least feel they're sincere to you. Yes, very true. I mean, you see any product, why is the packaging necessary? Cuz packaging makes a lot of difference, doesn't it? The more fancy and nice the packaging is, the more you can raise the price of that product and where there's no nice packaging it's just given to you roughly then you don't feel that you have been treated well i'm sorry go the last part of verse 27 waj'alani min al-mukramin i was thinking that this man he could have concealed his faith in front of his people and that would have he could have maintained the honor he had in the eyes of his nation but he did do that he declared his faith because he was so well wishing and we often forget that all honor all izza is in the hands of allah he's the only one who can give us honor and if we try to get it from people we're never going to achieve that very true very true because in declaring his faith he basically lost his honor before his people 
So much so that they didn't even have respect for his life anymore, even though he was one of them. But what happened? He lost that honor for the sake of Allah, and Allah gave him real honor. Assalamu alaikum. I just wanted to share something. I was listening to a tafsir by Naomi Khan and he was talking about the previous phase of Mali Allah. And he was saying how beautiful is that because that statement is usually said as a response to a question of what is it to you? What is it that you're doing? And he was saying that part, that question is not included in the previous ayah. And he was saying how beautiful is that, that the Quran is not like a regular novel where it's like this and then it happens and then this happens. But even within that one phrase, you can pull out so many other previous messages. Um, messages that was there and it was one of the beautiful things about that ayah. Okay, let's continue. So, it was said, قِيلَ دْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ It was said, enter paradise. And he said, I wish my people could know. Why? So that they too would believe. If they would know of بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ If they could know of all the honor that Allah has given me, all the blessings He has given me, then they would also know. So he wanted them to know in order that they would believe. Now apparently this was a terrible end. But in reality it was an excellent beginning. Because he was admitted straight into paradise. And this is something that we have to remember. Anything we lose in the way of Allah, it's not the end. It's a beginning. Because even in this world when a person loses something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him something better in its place. Especially when that is lost in the way of Allah. Look at what happened with the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca. Did he apparently lose the honor and the respect that he had amongst his people? Yes, he did in Mecca. What happened to Musab ibn Umayr anhu? What happened to you know, so many of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ? Whatever worldly prestige and blessings they had, apparently they lost them. But it was not an end. It was a new beginning. And beginnings are always harder. That startup is always difficult. It's the beginning. That means there's more to come. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not give them a better home, a better place to live, the city of Medina, better people, a better nation? Yes. بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجْعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ Certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives honor to those who believe in Him. Allah says, وَمَا and not أَنزَلْنَا We sent down عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ On his people مِنْ بَعْدِهِ After him Meaning after they killed that believer Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not have to send down on them مِنْ جُنْدٍ Any soldiers, any army مِنَ السَّمَاءِ From the sky There was no need to send a heavenly force Meaning the angels in order to punish these people. وَمَا كُنَّا مُنزِلِينَ وَمَا and not كُنَّا we were munzilin ones to send down, meaning we would not have done so anyway. Why? Because there was no such need. In other words, when they killed that man, then those people were punished. And how were they punished? It was not difficult for Allah to punish them. Why? Because in not, كانت it was, إلا except صيحة واحدة, a single shout, a single blast, one sound. And that sound was enough to, فَإِذَا So immediately, هُمْ دَيْ خَامِدُونَ Ones who were extinguished. خامدون is a plural of خامد. خامد from خمود. خمود خامد دال. خمود is basically extinguished ashes. So think about wood that is burning. And once the flames have died, the embers give out what is left, just coal. And that coal, once it cools down, what's going to happen to it? It'll just crumble. Right? It's just ashes. So فَإِذَا هُمْ خَامِدُونَ This was their state. Like a violent fire, they denied their prophets. With rage, with fury, with violence. And what happened? One blast was enough to put them out. One blast was sufficient to blow the life out of them. Just one shout killed them all. إِن كَانَتْ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ خَامِدُونَ Or this ayah can also be understood as the day of judgment. Meaning, all such deniers will be finished with one shout, one blast. And what is that one blast? The blowing of the trumpet. Allah says, Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Ya o hasratan, regret. 
Ya hasratan, meaning how regretful. Ah, the anguish, meaning how sad. How very sad. And the word hasra is from the root letters hasin ra. What does hasra mean? Regret. It's basically from the word hasid. And hasid is to become tired. Right? To become tired. And hasra is that when a person has been in so much grief for so long that it's as though the heart is tired of grieving. You understand? So much grief that you're tired of grieving. You're sick of grieving. Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Such unending grief. For who? For the servants. Now who is the one who is feeling this grief? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need to regret or feel sad. Because he doesn't suffer from the disbelief of his servants. What is meant over here is that the state of the servants is very pitiful. It's so pitiful that it would even grieve the angels. It would even grieve the sky. It would even sadden the sun and the moon and the oceans and the mountains. And of course, these people would themselves be in regret. Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Oh, what a pity for the servants. What a pitiful state they're in. What is that? That ma ya'tihim, ma not ya'tihim, he comes to them. Mir rasulin, any messenger, illa except kanu, they have been, bihi of him, meaning of the messenger, they have been yastahzi'un, they have been mocking, they have been making fun of, they have been ridiculing that messenger who was sent to them. And as a result, what happened? Because of their mockery, because of their denial, ultimately those people were punished. Or they lived with that denial, they died with that denial. So at the end of the day, ya hasra, how sad. If only they would pay attention to the message of the messengers. And if only they would pay attention to themselves and wake up from that state of heedlessness. If only they would believe, but they don't. How sad. This is as if, you know, a person who is really destroying themselves, harming themselves by their wrong actions. And they don't realize what they're doing. And others feel sorry for them. Others are crying for them, grieving for them. But they don't feel sorry for themselves. But eventually they will, when they will lose everything. So, Ya hasratan ala al-ibad, ma ya'tihim min rasulin, illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un. Alam yaraw, have they not seen? كم أهلكنا how many we have destroyed قبلهم before them من القرون of the generations all of the word قرن meaning on what basis are the people of مكة denying محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم have they not seen the example of the past nations these people they say to you لست مرسلا have they not seen what happened to the past nations who said the exact same words to their prophets and what happened to them Ahlakna, we destroyed them. And now that they're gone, Annahum ilayhim, do they not see that Annahum ilayhim, that these people, meaning the past people, they're not going to, la yarji'un, they're not going to return? That once they have died, they're not coming back to this world? Once we leave this world, we're not coming back. And this is a fact. That the person who dies is not returning to this world. There is no second chances. So will they not learn from this? The people who died 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 1000 years ago, can they come back to the world and make amends? And live a better life? Can they? No. And whatever glory and fame they had, it's gone. It finished with them. Their time of glory is gone. So it's as if the people of Mecca are being asked that how long do you think your glory will last? People come to this world and they leave. And once they leave, they do not return. So aren't you going to do something while you are alive? in and indeed, kullun all, lamma, yet, jami'un, all together, ladayna, near us, muhbarun, wants to be presented. Meaning, surely, indeed, all of them, meaning all people, will be brought present before us. The word lamma, over here, the word lamma is for, for emphasis. Right? Or it can be understood as illa, except. Right? So firstly, we can understand this as, indeed, 
for emphasis. And then we translate the word in as indeed. So wa in kullulamma. That indeed, surely, definitely, all, jami'ul ladayna muhdarun, all will be presented before us. Or secondly, the word lamma can be understood as illa, and then in will be translated as not. That there is none except that they will be gathered and brought before us. So all will be gathered, brought before Allah. There is none except that they will be gathered and brought before Allah. Meaning who can escape? No one can escape. So will these people not wake up? Will they not take a lesson from history? Will they not take a lesson from people who are gone? Can they ever return to the world and, and fix the mistakes they made? No, they cannot. There is no second chances. So what are they waiting for? The past nations, their days of glory came to an end. And while we are alive, we should also remember that our days of glory will also come to an end. So let's do something. Let's make the change that Allah wants us to make before our time ends. Ya hasratan al ibad What a pitiful state people are in. Life is so short. It's only once. But yet, what is it that people are clinging to? This dunya. This is what they're running after. They make fun of the deen, they leave the deen. They make fun of the prophets, they make fun of the scripture. And then at the end, when they leave this world, what do they have? Neither the dunya, nor the akhirah. This is the sad state of people. This is the sad state of the human being. That when he clings to this world, and when he is arrogant towards the truth, what does he have at the end? Nothing. Nothing. Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka.